Ah, I'm tired of traveling or fighting superstition and its many manifestations. Even though it was me who chose to debunk folklore and mysticism, little did I know I'd end up being labeled as Patrick Galloway, the man with endless occult knowledge. Before I knew it, people all over the world paid me to investigate all kinds of weird things. <laughs> as long as they paid me, I'd look into it. Funny thing though, the more I saw, the more I believe there are forces beyond our control. Creatures not explainable in any human terms. Things that make my skin crawl. I fled from Ireland and hung around Paris and London with no real purpose till the Great War started. I joined a special unit whose job it was to squelch the fears of the superstitious farm boys who made up the fighting ranks. The Tresanti were the biggest pains. He commanded an officer, Jeremiah Covenant, led our unit on the hunt for their camp. We were ambushed. They came streaming out of the woods, waving swords and howling like banshees. I saw their leader holding a strange stone over his head, yelling weird words in a strange tongue. And just when I was gonna pull the trigger, he glared right at me. A bright green flash came from his hand, and it bowled me over as my gun went off. I woke up in a hospital bed with severe burns. They told me Jeremiah and the unit had gone on without me, but he'd given me the shaman stone to keep. I hadn't given any of this much thought until I came back here to find this letter that Jeremiah wrote me almost six months ago, asking me to come back to Ireland and help him out. This is not something I'm dying to do, for it may mean the death of me. He saved my life, though, so I owe it to him. Just hope it's not too late. God, that's loud. <laughs> wow, that's loud. Anyways, hello everyone, and welcome to the Cor the Corius Plays. I am your host, the Corius, and well, what we're playing here, as you probably have, some of you may have guessed, some of you may have never heard of this game, but we're playing Clive Barker's Undying. Clive Barker's Undying is an old game, 2001. There's a couple other games in the Clive Barker series, like Clive Barker's Jericho, and I think there is one more. Well, this is an old horror game, and what I'm going to do here... God damn it, rats. Not again. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do one playthrough. I'm going to go through everything, find all the secrets, try to see every conversation I can, and then uh, after that, there's going to be another playthrough where I'm going to be doing a glitch run. I'm going to try to speed run this game later on, so hopefully that goes well. So let's get started and actually go, instead of doing what I normally do, go to the front door, let's go talk to this person over here. Only has one thing to say. You're Jeremiah's old war buddy, right? Indeed. And that's all. Anyways, this is a great way to start the game. Oh yeah, by the way, scrying ability, let's just see something that we normally wouldn't be able to see. Person hanging off the edge of the uh, lamppost. Lovely. That's why the rats are here. And bats! Two little bats. And they're gone. Well, let's get started. I'm Patrick Galloway, a friend of Jeremiah's. Sorry it took me so long to get here. His letter said it was most urgent. Jeremiah is beginning to think that the letter never arrived in your hands. He seems quite anxious to see you. We've all been quite worried. Jeremiah is now bedridden. Follow me and I'll show you to his living quarters. Lovely attempt at Irish accents. That's all I gotta I say. I apologize for the look of the house, but there's only a skeleton or two of servants now. Jeremiah let go of everyone else. And the house is much too large for us to clean. Because we've lost electricity for most parts of the house, we can only maintain the living quarters. This family had so much tragedy. I hope you can help him. One of the things we're going to find out through this entire playthrough is everyone here sucks at Irish accents. Every time we turn a corner, 
Well, not really every time, but don't bump into people like this. I don't know if he's trying to look like a clown or not. And another corner, and hey, another time. Hi. Oh, look at you being all pretty. Look at that pretty face. Oh, let's go pick up this health pack. We're gonna hear this a lot. Jammed, stuck, won't budge. Yeah, anyways. Let's go into another fucking cutscene. Patrick, you made it. At your service, Jeremiah. Sorry for the delay, but I've been abroad. What happened to you? It seems I've come under the watchful eye of the Reaper, my friend. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Apparently too long. Patrick, I came back from the war only to find my entire estate in disarray. My brother Aaron disappeared first, and then my sister Bethany. My declining health is a result of an old war wound, and unfortunately, the symptoms are irreversible. I didn't summon you here to... Now, modern science. I, I need your help. Anything I can do. Just name it. Strange events began happening around the manor. After thinning out my staff, they ransacked my estate, taking whatever they could carry. The rest of the help was quick to follow, as they feared rumors of my family's curse. I can't help but think it's more than a coincidence that strange happenings have increased since I've been back from the war. I want to get to the bottom of this, but I'm just too weak to investigate it myself. I'm relying on you to step in for me. Of course, Jeremiah. The only reason I risk coming back here is to assist you however I can. My thanks to you, Patrick. What the hell was that? Sounds like it came from downstairs. I'll check it out. Lock the door behind me. Lovely. We have a gun. <laughs> Everyone knows what a gun's used for. Well, I don't know. Is it for shooting people in the foot? Yeah, obviously shooting people in the foot. Oh, hi again. Hi, Mr. Clown. I don't even know what your name is. I don't remember it. You're just gonna stand there and drift away. Alright, let's follow. Always a good idea to follow the uh, floating man in the air, right? I don't know. Well, he's showing us the direction to go, I hope. Lovely. Oh. What was that? Door open? Oh, yeah. And here we go. Can you describe what you can only see? As the bonds of flesh are broken, the world becomes apparent. Alrighty then. Oh, let's go further down. That's not the door we were supposed to go through. Is it this door? Nope. That door. There we go. Alright, on to the next health pack. Obviously we need a lot of those. Well, not really. In a second you'll see why I don't, won't need that many health packs. Oh, and scream. Not even gonna bother shooting at you. I'm gonna shoot at that. I have terrible aim. But yeah, as you can tell, I'm on easy. I suck. I suck at aiming. No, I don't want to do camp, man. I want to reload. I don't know why caps lock is reload. There we go. Just continuing on. Wasn't there one right in here? Oh, there they are. No. Continuing on up the stairs. I think there's something over there, but you know what? Mario, halfway up the stairs, I might as well continue up. Do do do. I really suck at aiming. Oh, you didn't die. There we go. Well, that'll be an easy kill. Watch me block pick it up. Oh, never mind. And on to the next cutscene where we learn about superstition. Those beasts were after me. What in God's name were those things? They're called howlers. Well, I've never seen one before tonight. I've heard of them for years. Those weren't natural, my friend. We're fighting more than superstitions here. Perhaps I was being naive not to tell you. But there might be something more sinister at work here. When I was a boy, I find it hilarious how he just repeated what I said. I can't quite explain. You see, there was this aisle of standing stones that sits just off the estate. Someone had carved a sigil into each of the stones, something indiscernible. 
father had many books on the occult, one of which contained a sketch of that very symbol. I took my brothers and sisters out to the island and read from my father's book. Well, what happened? Something answered. The ocean began to boil, and a great wind whipped against us as we stood in the circle, and my siblings huddled to the ground in fear. Eventually, the wind died, and the sea settled. Patrick, I know it sounds like the ravings of a dying man, but I believe those standing stones had something to do with this. What has once been a taint upon this family has now begun to manifest itself. But you told me you're dying. Doesn't this curse end with you? Who knows? My brothers and sisters are dead, but I don't think they're really gone. I've heard some servants whispering. They think they've seen Lisbeth on the estate. My family has come for me. I sense them, Patrick. By now, you and I know the supernatural exists. You saw the Howlers. And what about our encounters with the Tersanti during the war? You still even carry the Gelzebar stone with you. It's a token of the Shemans life I took. That's all. I found a scroll with a picture of a Gelzebar on it. I believe it contains the way to awaken the stone's dormant power. Very well. Let me study this scroll overnight, and I'll see what I can do in the morning. This house still hides many secrets. I'm counting on you to reveal them and put an end to this mess.